Hi everybody, how you doing? I'm Pabs, a rising VTuber and an artist. Today, we are going to be working on a sketch for the new year. So as you all may know, this year in the lunar calendar, or no, it's the, anyway, the Chinese zodiac animal for this year is the dragon. And apparently it's, it has the element of wood as well. So I wanted to make like a piece Y'all might remember from last year that I made one for the Year of the Rabbit, which was this one here. I wanted to try and do one for the Year of the Dragon as well. So this is the preliminary sketch that I've got worked out. Back here are a couple of pictures that I found for inspiration. I honestly really like them. Um, I'm lucky enough to have a relative who really likes this kind of artwork. And so she was a great resource for this. All right. So let me tuck these away in their own little folder to begin with. Oh yeah. By the way, I am back now. Like I uh <laughs> I did take a two week break over the holidays, but I am I have returned. I am fully recharged. Mostly recharged. We'll see how recharged I am. <laughs> it was pretty hectic, but I do have some stories to tell out of it, so. Hopefully those will be a little bit entertaining to discuss while we uh, work on this. But yeah. Uh, the lineless art style is something that I'm still not super comfortable with. But I think it's exactly because of that that I should kind of try and get not used to it, but more familiar with it. So yeah, the Chinese dragon. Uh, a lot of the times it has a pearl somewhere in there either like grasping at it or tucked away under under its chin. And this one here, it's kind of breathing fire towards it. So I wanted to do something with that. Uh, yeah, this it's it's going to be just tucked away right here on the, the chin, and that's going to be what this kind of like, very analogous to this little part here. So let's get started with that. Did I use pure white for this? I did. That's unusual. I feel like I don't usually do that. Oh well. Okay, so... Hmm. I kind of want to do something with this, so... Since this one was this... Whoa, what happened there? Anyway, since this one was this kind of a vertical cross here, I wanted to do a more diagonal one this time around, which is what these little lines and symbols are. I also need to remember to add a white border around the picture. Hang on. Let's do that first, actually. I'm going to do that by shrinking down the selection on the border here. How big is... Okay, so that explains why I didn't do very much. Let me do like 100 pixels. Oh, wait, that's for expanding. My bad. No, wait, why isn't it shrinking? What's going on here? Hang on. That's not doing it. Oh, wait, I, I know what's going on. There we go. That's more like it. Okay, so we invert that. There we go. Now we have a little bit of consistency between years, at least. Hmm. So let's make this one the pearl. We'll lock that layer so we don't accidentally move it later on. Or, wait, can I? Can I? Okay, no. Locking the layer does mean you can't move it in the future. That's perfect, actually. That's exactly what I want. Also, lock the border layer. There we go. Ugh. Yeah, let me tell you guys about my trip among the uh, among the holidays, right? Because that was like the main thing that happened. I did visit my family throughout the holidays, and I'm very eager to tell that story because it's the actual trip itself wasn't that unusual, right? It was like no. Okay, so let me rephrase that. Getting to the place was the hardest part. Like, that was, like, the most exciting part. It was just actually getting to where I wanted to be. After that, it was just kind of a matter of 
chilling with my family. Like I, I, I'm, I have a really close relationship with my family. And so when I got there, we didn't actually plan anything. A lot of this was just very spur of the moment. The only thing we had on the agenda was a trip to Costco, <laughs> which I will talk about later. Hold on, there's something on. Hmm. But yeah, so the and the most difficult part of like the trip to see my family is usually just the actual trip to see them. Everything after that is just like fine and dandy, right? And this one was especially kind of difficult, and I'll tell you why. It, it, to tell you the story of why this trip was so fucking hard <laughs> to make, I will have to actually begin the night before the trip. So the trip was on a Saturday morning, right? And on Friday night, I had wrapped up. This was like on the 22nd, right? I'd wrapped up my final Hat in Time stream. That was like the final stream I was, I was going to do that year. And at that point, I hadn't packed my bags. I had not washed my dishes. I hadn't thrown out my trash. I had not scheduled my hiatus announcement. I hadn't done basically literally any of the stuff that I needed to do before actually going on the trip. And it was like 10 p.m. And I actually still had some work to do from my job because like they needed me to do some stuff right like before the break for the holidays that I took. So that was also still on the docket. So I just kind of knuckled down, drank a monster energy, and I was like, all right, let's do this thing. By the time I had finished doing everything that I needed to do, it was I was like half an hour out from having to, from like the guy that was supposed to pick me up, right? Like the, I, I scheduled like a taxi to pick me up to the airport. It was I I'd finished like literally thirty minutes before the guy was supposed to pick me up. So yeah, I I, I basically power ran the <laughs> entire what was supposed to be like the entire week because I'd spent the entire week doing stuff at work, doing doing some stuff for the Christmas bubble stream and everything. But I made it, I made it. Let me try and center this thing. Okay, so I kind of wanted a... Hmm. I wonder if having the pearl kind of do like an outward radial style shining would be more appropriate. Or maybe the pearl can even be a different color. It doesn't have to be white necessarily. Let me do this on a different layer, just so we're certain. And with a ruler, too. That would, that would help a lot, actually. Maybe around here. Then with the, opposite, the exact opposite direction over here. Anyway. So the ta the taxi comes and picks me up. The first leg of the journey to see my family was kind of awful as well. <laughs> oh, thank you for the rice feast. Let me let me put that guy in there. The first leg of the trip was probably the hardest one out of all of them because you know, the aforementioned lack of sleep and also because for some reason like, I was seated, to, I realized I am seated next to the world's, like, widest 60-year-old man. I feel like I need to clarify this, because this guy was, like, wide in a very specific way. Right? Like, he wasn't fat, he was just wide. Like, I felt like I was seated next to an upside-down clothes hanger. <laughs> right? Th this guy was, like, weirdly tuned for, a, for an old man. Like, he we weirdly jacked, not tuned, jacked for an old man. Anyway, 
because he was so wide, I actually had to like squeeze one of my shoulders forward while I was seated. So just so I would have enough like room on the aisle. And also I was I was on an, an aisle seat, so like I so whenever like one of the little snack carts passed by the place as well, I would kind of have to <laughs> Old Man McMuscles is coming down to open the pickle jar for Jess. <laughs> It's a Christmas miracle. <laughs> Hi, Jackie. Oh, right. I need to record the time lapse for this thing. But yeah. Anyway, because I was on the aisle, I was I occasionally had to like do, do a double squeezing action with my shoulders. <laughs> I was I was like one of those like like one of those grip training exercise things. Anyway, that was the first leg of the journey. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah I was like all right. Oh shit, here comes the, the car. Okay, like normally I'm like this, right? Normally I like to have my space. But this time around I was like this. All right, <laughs> this is how I felt on that fucking plane. All right, let me let me re let me re ratio myself. <laughs> This guy was like a very stereotypical like old dude as well. By the way, like he 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 was like dressed in like corduroys and shit. Like he had he had like a uh, tweed jacket and everything. Like this was definitely like an old guy, old guy. You know, like there's old guys that you're like, yeah, yeah, okay, you're old, but you're not an old guy. This guy was like an old guy. <laughs> I have no idea if that makes sense. Uh anyway, I got off the uh, the airplane. The second leg of the trip, I was basically hauling ass from the get-go because by the time we'd landed, I had like 20 minutes to get to my next gate. <laughs> and that's like when we landed too. So by the time I'd actually gotten off the plane and into the terminal, I had like 10 minutes. And this was a big fucking airport too. <laughs> like, oh man. Real quick shout out to my guy, the flight steward though. I think he realized that like there were a bunch of people who had connecting flights on the plane. And he actually had to like go up to the start of the aisle and be like, "All right, I anybody who has a flight within an hour, you guys can go first. My guy, that that is like the kindest thing that any flight steward has done for me. Shout outs to him. Shout outs to him. Absolute hero. Thank you, plane man. Me after. <laughs> I I'm about to I was about to make a DB Cooper joke but then I thought better of it. <laughs> anyway, so I'm hauling ass out the gate and I I realized very quickly that I'm also very much not the only guy who is in this predicament because I was like wheezing my ass across the airport wearing an N95 mask and carrying my luggage and I hear some footsteps running beside me and I turn around and I see another dude in shorts and a hoodie just jogging alongside me and he's like, "Oh, are you going to Atlanta too?" Bro thought we were in like some kind of Adam Sandler flick. <laughs> Shout out to that guy too. Funniest funniest guy that I met in the in the trip. Oh my god. Yeah, th apparently they Oh hey, hey Cannon, how you doing? Yeah, no, we were brothers in arms at that moment. No, I was extremely lucky actually because I found out that like originally my flight my the second leg of the journey the plane the plane for that was stationed in another terminal so i would have had to get on a bus but to go to the terminal where my flight actually was been good been looking looking for a second while i cook nice hope you good luck with cooking honestly like i hope you make something tasty hope you make some decent f fulfilling meals but yeah, I was very lucky that my gate had changed because instead of having to haul ass all the way to the to another to a whole other terminal, I just had to haul ass to the same terminal, just a little bit of a distance away. So yeah, small favors at least, right? Anyway, I touched down at the gate there, and they, and they were like already boarding the first group, so I was basically right on time. Luckiest, one of the luckiest moments of my life.
After that, the trip wasn't too hectic, right? Like, I, I did have to t check my luggage because they ran out of overhead space, but it was otherwise very uneventful. Those were, like, the big things that happened on the trip to see my family. Hoping my food tastes good, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Recently, I found out I went to my uh, Asian grocery store, right? Child, I'd like to imagine people running it down alongside the vehicle, looking at the airport windows as their plane starts to leave. Yo, that was so me when I was like seven years old and on my first plane. Genuinely, that was like that was like literally me. Dude, that kid, that kid must have had so much fun. Imagining a guy running alongside your vehicle should be like should be a more cultural. Like a more universally recognized cultural thing. Oh wait, I have the hang on. Ba, 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 ba. Liquify tool. Here we go. So yeah, that, that that was the trip there and toward my parents' house. Uh, once I got there, we I, we didn't actually do very much. Like we didn't have a whole lot on the itinerary for when I visited because it was it was very much a very last moment spur of the moment kind of decision that I would visit my parents. They were originally supposed to visit me, but some stuff with the visas didn't work out too good. So I ended up visiting them once I got that opportunity. At least we got to see each other, though. That, that, was, that was, like, the biggest blessing that I could have asked for, is just being able to see my family. Yeah. I think the only thing that was in on the itinerary was going to Costco, which we did fulfill. We did actually end up doing that. I'm going to make this a color so that I can actually see what the hell I'm doing. Oh, wow. Okay, we need to... Fill this weirdly Xbox logo like gap here in the middle. I did talk about my I, I did talk about like the that the fact that we'd made plans with my parents to go to Costco on like the bobble making stream. I did fulfill my promise. I did end up buying the infamous dollar fifty combo glizzy soda pop drink beverage. Very very good purchase. However, I did realize, like after I posted the picture confirming that and the confirming the glizzy touchdown, as I like to call it, I um, <laughs> I don't think everybody knew that I had promised to do that. So I just posted the Costco hot dog with like the caption, like I told y'all I'd do it <laughs> with zero context, <laughs> and l literally like two two people were like, "This sounds ominous as fuck, man. What the hell are you talking about?" <laughs> uh. Uh, that, I, I re I'm really happy that like uh, so many people were confused. <laughs> uh, good times. Yeah, not not to sound like some kind of consumerist, Mark, but I did miss going to Costco with my family. That was like a bit. That was like a, something that I'd really been missing, just shopping with my family. So I'm I'm glad we got the chance to do that much. We also had some ideas about like going to the movies and such, but I didn't. I wasn't really feeling it at that point. You know, I I, kinda, I just kind of wanted to chill for a while. I did use that opportunity to beat Ghost Trick, though. I did. I did end up finishing that. I Ghost Trick is a really good fucking game. <laughs> Ominous statements next to mundane occurrences and items. <laughs> what like put, putting up a picture of? Like a rack of spices and being like, you're not as strong enough to survive this. <laughs> that, that, that <laughs> I feel like that could be a genre of image. I remember somebody once posted a picture of the moon with, with the phrase something of like, among the, along the lines of, you have no idea what it takes to survive this. And I will say that that was a very haunting image, but I think, I feel like the moon has a lot more kind of like, dignity and like celestial significance than say a dollar fifty glizzy. 
Shout out to whoever to the people who popularize the use of use of the phrase glizzy. By the way, I don't. I literally have no idea where we, we would be without the phrase glizzy, or without that kind of vocabulary. But yeah. So Ghost Trick, love the visuals. I didn't get to experience the soundtrack too much, which is I'm trying I'm trying to catch up on that. I had the audio muted for like ninety percent of the time. Lizzie is a nice word. I couldn't describe it to a hot dog personally, but the culture, but the culture has spoken. <laughs> yeah, that reminds me of when somebody told me that that now people call toes dogs for some reason, and like when somebody has their feet out there, like oh, those dogs are barking, as like a funny thing to say. And I'm like, now personally, I wouldn't have chosen that, but I understand that that's how it is now. <laughs> Glizzy Golden Guzzler, what are the feelings of that price? I personally prefer Gl Glizzy Gulper, by the way, in, in my own per humble personal opinion. Guzzler, Guzzler is nice because it has a lot of that alliteration with the C's, right? But I, but Gulper per presents such a much more visceral, powerful image, right? Like, I, I feel like when you, like, if you're saying, oh, that guy's gulping down those hot, those glizzies. I feel like it, it implies such a veracity so as to treat the solid food as a liquid. Piggy said dogs, we've got pork sausages in those sandals. <laughs> what an absolute <laughs> Dracula flow ass phrase. <laughs> that that was beautiful, Jupiter. <laughs> Pardon gluttony made real. True, true. This is my first time hearing Glizzy Gulper, adding this to my lexicon. Mm -hmm. It's important to learn something new every once in a while, right? They ne we never specify what that new thing has to be. Glizzy gulping, squelching, and supping. Supping is a one that I is a word that I feel has unfairly fallen out of favor. I, I feel like I feel like guzzling and or like supping needs to make a comeback. Like I feel like I should be allowed to say, "Oh yeah, I I, I supped real hard last night, and I I ate an entire pot of stew. I supped real hard on some stew." I feel like we should be allowed to say that. Glizzy sups, a new product from the drink company with anime girls on bottles. Oh god, anime girl bl hot dog water would be fucking <laughs> like the mo the Morbius of anime consumer products. She's so good at hard to my shorts. Oh, you guys are too much. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't there some dude? I think that, I feel like that wasn't an actual thing. Like somebody made like a social experiment where they pretended to sell like a bottled hot dog water as like a medical drink. Hang on, I need to make put this a little bit. I think about this doesn't seem right. Sup, bro, got a whole new meaning. Don't know how to take that greeting ever again. I mean, I feel like it's it, it would be now in a similar vein to Bon Appetit, right? Like, it'd be saying, go ahead, bro, start supping. <laughs> bro, sups? Me, what I'm asking my friend if he wants to go get something to eat. One of those hot vending machines. If you're fancy, it juices it fresh into a cup. Yeah. And if you're lucky, you even get a little bit of a little bite of shredded hot dog in there. A little bit more bang for your buck. Hot dog water, now with pulp! <laughs> oh god, we need to... I feel like we need to pivot. This is quickly turning into, like, an unbelievably cursed conversation. The dog TV! <laughs> Fuck. The dog teeny and the Long Island brat tea. Oh, God. 
See, I always had the hot dog water with just the water used to boil hot dog. What? But now Jupiter introduced an interesting angle to it. Hmm. True, true. I feel like I also thought that, that traditionally, I say traditionally as, as, as if though any of this was more recent than like the 50s. Traditionally, I feel like hot dog water is just the water used to boil the hot dogs. But like now it's introduced, Jupiter has presented us with an interesting new spin on it, which is that instead of like, instead of the boiled hot dog water, it's something like an extract, more like a, a, a medicinal concoction, a tincture, if you will. Hmm. I feel like we don't make tinctures enough these days. Time was you could you could you could get like a snake oil salesman selling you all kinds out out of the wazoo sorts of tinctures, right? Like you could get like a tincture for fucking I don't know having a runny nose, but nowadays you don't see a whole lot of tinctures. Those Tower of Babel Bloody Marys? Maybe brew would be a better word, but I think that the hot dog water would be ready to dispense nearly immediately. Mm. Uh, no, I, think, I do feel like for proper hot dog water, you would need to like, steep it at least, at least for a little bit, right? We need to scam people more. <laughs> Got it? Uh, yeah. And I can't wait to see what the hot new grift will be after people are sick and tired of investing their bullshit, their money into AI bullshit. We need to. I need whoever, whoever. I need like the head grifter at the in this whole thing to pull the rug faster. Bot, bot spotted. Kill, kill, kill. Speaking of grifts. <laughs> God. Now medical treatment meant for <laughs> treatment for scamitis. Yeah. I I hmm. Now I was gonna say that like I don't know I don't know if that would be false advertising, but the thing is like the FDA has zero hand in any of this. Man, remember that one guy who claimed to have vaped the original Gamer Girl bathwater? I wonder how that dude's doing with his life. I can't help but shake. I can't help but feel like he might be addicted to Genshin Impact now. I don't know. I feel like that he would be the exact kind of mark to fall for that. Doctor says the only way to treat scamitis is to hand over the entirety of my wallet. I'm not too sure about it, but who am I to question medical science? Ah, yes. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I weird thing too. I got this. I got the, my uh, recommendation for this doctor from my good friend and frequent caller, Scam Likely. Scientists will study that guy for years. Oh my god, I hope so. Someone vaped the game of girl bathwater. Words I have never typed before. God willing, never will. <laughs> Mr. President, <laughs> no, I can't make that joke. I can't make that joke. Vaping hot dog water and my lungs become slick and greasy. I mean, your lungs are already kind of slick and greasy is the thing. Like, your... Aeoli? The, the fucking surface of your lungs is actually a, supposed to be a little bit greasy and wet because that way air doesn't 100% stick to it, but it does stick to it a little bit. Vaping hot dog water and my lungs become... Oh, wait, no, I read that already. There's gotta be someone who did some crazy stuff with that water. Someone has to have made hot dog gamer girl bathwater, surely. Not my greasy, greasy lungs. Lung greasy. Who released? <laughs> who released Mega Man? <laughs> January seventh. Oh God. I thought that J the Jay Easy actually performed for like a huge crowd recently. I don't. I don't know the context of that clip, but I. But good for him, honestly. I was never book smart. I'm money smart. Makes me more intelligent. Okay. 
Hang on, I gotta turn I gotta turn off my night light because I've been working with that on the whole time. I just gotta uh, okay, okay, okay. All right. Selling perhaps uh, selling perhaps a peak of indulgence seen in the f in field of infused waters. God. Cross infusions with different types of bath waters must go crazy. We've we've got like actual alchemists and shit just brewing up all kinds of highness concoctions in their labs in this field. I feel like this is the closest we're ever gonna get to making an actual philosopher's stone. I say we give them a government grant and see where they take it. I I, I kind of want to see what they do with it. Unfortunately, knowing the kind of people involved in this, I have no doubt that it'll eventually all kind of be fun funneled one way into another, into like a landfill's worth of Funko Pops. It, you know, they they say follow the money. You always got to. It always ends up going to the Funko Pops one way or another. All right, so we have a bunch of these different things here. I kind of want to... Ooh, the blue is a nice touch. We are, however, working with, like, more kind of green tones this time around, because I am hoping to make this, like, thim spring-themed. Now, now, whenever I see like uh like pale greens and dark greens and such, I can't help but remember Sprigatito. Imagining Funko Pop eyes as a prop for your face. I mean, we can do that. Like that's something I could do right now if I wanted to. Hang on, let me let me put my money where my mouth is. Funko Pop eyes PNG. Now, hopefully, there's a PNG readily available on the internet for me to do to grab these. Okay, doesn't seem that way. Hang on. Oh, here we go. Let's make let's make get, get the file size nice and big, shall we? We get like the wallpaper size one, so we have like a good sort of space. Oh, this one will work. I don't know who this guy is, but I'm taking his eyeballs. We don't even need to delete and delete the face. We just kind of need to lasso. Oops. We just need to lasso tool the eye. Hang on. Did I aim this just right? Okay. Copy and paste those. Let me grab a new yeah. blue eyes white dragon Funko Pop. I mean, I did see a, a Kurapika Funko Pop among the results on my first search, and uh, well, that's the guy <laughs> finding of Isaac looking floating ball eyeball, sir. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> okay, so now we just need to kind of extract the eyes from this thing. It's not right that, I, that I'm that i just like shearing off the little bits of skin around them. I feel like I should be able to like pop it out of the PNG like the seed of a ch of like a an olive. Because I'm in the eyes. God. Okay. Here we got this one. Wait, I'm putting way too much effort into this. I need to I need to like downscale just <laughs> just to ease my conscience. Let me use the wand tool real quick. And then let me expand that by one pixel. There we go. All right, now we're going to save this 
in my downloads folder. What if Magic wanted the skin and already said, gone back from the extra skin bits? Like I said, I feel like I shouldn't put too much effort into this, le lest it stray from its ironic purpose. Here we fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to adjust them. These are perfect the way they are. Ah, fuck. Scared the shit out of me. I hate you. I hate, I hate Funko Pop Kurapika. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> like a sea creature. There's a red eyes black dragon Funko Pop. Let me Google this post haze. Funko Pop. Well, I'll be damned. There he is. Hang on, why is it not letting me... There we go. There's also the blue eyes white dragon one. Like an animal, an anomalocaris to me. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Rice piece can get them too. I will need to scale these ones down a little bit. Hang on, can I make them like cover up the normal eyes? I need to like put them closer together. Hang on. No, no, no. I, I can't. I can't warp their forms. I need to like maintain the form consistently. Hang on. There we go. <laughs> Race piece accidentally <laughs> gets ear piercings. I look like a SpongeBob popsicle. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We were making an illustration, I think. <laughs> At some point during the stream, we were making an illustration. I'm going to remove this part here. Because that's where the rest of the dragon is going to go. All right, so let me put this guy up here. I hope this is part of the time lapse. Unfortunately, because it was in another um, window, like you see here uh, how I have two tabs, one for the original picture that I took of the sketch and one for the actual one. Unfortunately, because it wasn't a different one, I it will not end up in the time lapse. I can, however, do a quick and dirty little Easter egg. Let's put this guy right around. Here. Just let, let that simmer for a little bit. You know, this is a compromise. You, you can't always get what you want. So occasionally you do have to compromise with what, with what you are doing. Pearl creature. Mm-hmm. All right, let me start making the beard this thing has. Okay. That should be good. Let me take away all this other stuff. This is a real Dragon Ball C right here. <laughs> Looks a little bit like a snout. Oh, it, it kind of does, doesn't it? Love this animal. The snout. Me when I'm, po I'm pointing at a sloth. I've always thought that sloths had a very... I don't know how to put it. I feel like if I saw, if I saw a sloth, and I got to name it, I would not name that thing a sloth, but sloth seems to fit it perfectly as well. You know, it, it's like, it's not the name that I would have chosen for it, but I, I understand why it was chosen. 
sort of thing, sort of deal. I don't know. There's a lot of things like that, right? Like you're like, huh? Okay, so that's what it's called. I didn't. I wasn't expecting that to be its name. Like one, like for example, like I like when I heard Animal Caris, and I remember what that thing looked like. I'm like, yeah, no, that thing is definitely an Animal Caris. Probably butchering the pronunciation on that. Whatever. Oh well. Okay, and then we're going to add another thing on top of this. I'm kind of going willy nilly with the colors because I don't. I'm not gonna be like super torn up about it in the when I need to like change them over to another color eventually. This creature beeth the epitome of sin. We shall name it the sloth for its slovenliness. Yeah. Was didn't, doesn't sloth have like a Latin name or something? Like uh, Luxuria or something like that. Howdy, Pabs. How was the break? It was good. Hey, Cyprus. The break was pretty good. I was I, I was telling some stories about the journey and everything. Yeah, we're working on a on a dragon piece. Me when I'm when I'm asked <laughs> to make to name the crossover between the two biggest Shonen Jump properties. Hang on, let me add. I need to move this so that it's not like so, so, so close to the mustache. The dragon piece. I do remember that One Piece's original name was something like Romance Dawn or something, right? Like that was like its draft title. Jump Force! They did have a crossover fighting game on the DS. Neat. And yeah, I know about Jump Force. Oh man, I remember when, when Jump Force first released. I was at that time following like this one dude. I haven't follow, I haven't tapped into his content since then because I I I, I just kind of like stopped watching it. But I, I remember my guy was so so hyped for Jump Force, and like he would he had just like freshly watched Hunter Hunter too. Like he he had just learned who Kurapika was and everything. So it was like heartbreaking for for him to be like so excited and then for the game to turn out to be like. Not much at all. So yeah, sh poor guy there, right there, but like... Uh, I don't know, I feel like knowing what I know now about fighting games, I, I would have been, been able to see the writing on the wall much more easily. God, I am praying on my hand, on my hand, on my knees. Not on my hands and knees, just on my knees. That the Hunter Hunter fighting game is good. I really want the Hunter Hunter fighting game to be good. The the Hunter Hunter fans could use a win. Where the hell is this like Halo at? Oh, there it is. Twelve hundred thousand dollars. Hey, Zuji. 50-50 is going to be in Marvel vs. Capcom 3 or an arena fighter. <laughs> Have you guys ever seen that one movie that's like Journey to the Center of the Earth or something? And it's like, and like at one point they're like, 50-50 chance it's going to be like a plummet straight down or it's going to be like a water slide. And the kid is like crossing his fingers and praying like, water slide, water slide, water slide. <laughs> I feel like I'm like that kid right now. <laughs> I don't know, was, was Journey to the Center of the Earth actually that movie, or was, am I thinking of another one? That's a silly movie, I forgot it was a thing. Okay, so I am thinking of the right movie. Good, good, good. Yeah, I feel like that, was, like that, that, like that movie was kind of like in the era right before like, directed DVD movies just kind of died off as a genre. Like I, I, like, I feel like the time was, you could just find a hot, a hot ass piece of movie. Like, just a truly god awful movie. In like the bargain bin of like a Walmart or something, and just have a grand old time making fun of it with your family, just being like, "Man, this kind of sucks," but it's genuinely kind of heartfelt too. I feel like you don't get that these days with streaming services. Nowadays, it's just like Hallmark movie number five hundred and eighty-seven. Like when while I was visiting my parents, I, I I we actually tapped into this one movie. On a streaming service that was about like this dude who was visiting like a vineyard for the holidays 
and the, it was very much it, like it was very much like a it was a really hallmark movie hallmark movie they made a sequel starring the rock nice Okay, then we're going to add this here. Hallmark your hallmark. Mm -hmm. Genuinely, that's kind of what it felt like. Like I, like, I was watching it a little bit with my parents, and I'm like, this is a Hallmark movie-ass Hallmark movie. <laughs> There's no other way to describe it. All right. Uh, I think we're. Hmm. I don't like this part actually. Let me. This reminds me a little bit of a carrot actually, with the coloration and everything. It was called Journey Two, and it was about Gilbert's travels Treasure Island, twenty thousand leagues. Hmm. I remember one time as a kid, I read this parody of Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea, which was tw and it was some called something like. 20,000 baseball leagues under the sea, and it was like this treasure hunting story. Oh, hey, honeydew. Thank you for the sub. How you doing? All of them at once, huh? Yeah, now they were like, all right, we have got to tap into every single public domain property we can get our hands on. We are not getting this kind of money twice. <laughs> Fellas, we have got to blow, the, <laughs> blow this money, like, immediately. And also The Mysterious Island by Jules Verne. Hmm. I haven't heard of that one, actually. Good to stop by. Hey, you're always welcome in. But good to have you. I know, thank you for the sub. I haven't heard of The Mysterious Island. Is it somehow related to the beach that makes you old? I feel like we let the beach that makes you old die as a meme too fast. Like that was like a, such a profoundly dumb movie concept. I feel like we didn't make fun of it hard enough. We ne we are never making a new journey movie after this. Go ham, pop off, do do what you want to do, see your dreams fulfilled. God. The beach that makes you old. That was like an M. Night Shyamalan joint, right? Like, that was a Shyamalan movie? I have no fucking idea how to pronounce that name. It always confused me. Things to bring back. Tinctures. The beach that makes you old. Ah, <laughs> got scared by the Funko Popeyes down there. I forgot that I put them there. All right. All right, I should start labeling these, actually. Beard, head, eyes. Okay, then we got the horns, I believe, and after that, it's just kind of like making the coiling body. I have a plan for the body. And the whiskers, too. I'm going to need to make the whiskers. This dragon head is adorable. Thank you. All right, let's make the horns next. Honestly, I feel like horns that are kind of more like branchy and more like elk horns are an underrated concept. Like everybody want everybody wants sheep horns, everybody wants like demon horns. I feel like like just kind of like elk-ish horns like this are mad underrated. New layer for every piece. It's really smart. I I do I I do like working that way when I don't have the uh, what do you call uh bu -bu -bu -bu. when I'm not working with line art. The villains of that movie were a pharmaceutical company? <laughs> Why is fucking Umbrella Corporation pulling up to the function? <laughs> oh, wait, you meant for the... <laughs> for the beach that makes you old, I see. I thought that we were still talking about, like, journey to the center of the whatever. I thought that, like, they were the <laughs> villains of that movie, and I'm like, why the fuck are they there? God, that naturally occurring oldening beach, yeah. 
God, one of my I in my like original character universe, right? I have like a bunch of the whole the whole gist of it is that there are like these supernatural locations that are kind of powered by their local legends, right? Like, for example, there's like the one based on the Centennial light bulb, which is just a light bulb never going out. And I feel like Beach that makes you old is something that I could squeeze in there one way or another. We can <laughs> test this on people to make some kind of drugs. You get to the center of the earth, and who's there? Big Pharma. Now, I, I knew this problem went all the way down, but this is ridiculous. Oh, lifelong drug trials in a day. That's still really stupid. God. I mean, I'm not going to complain. As long as Big, Big Pharma is the villain at the end of the day, I feel like you, it's still a noble cause, but that's, like, really dumb. <laughs> like, that's a really weird kind of plot. How do I put this? Like, plot-driving villain. Because, like, if it's... I feel like a better story would have just been they accidentally go to the beach that makes you old, and it's fucked up, but they somehow... But at least one of them makes it out alive. How could they even properly study it? Like, 99% of the people who went on that beach just died. Yeah. I feel like two, two names in this world need, like, pronunciation guides. So the name of the guy who directed that movie and also Worcestershire Sauce. I know Worcestershire just for one reason and one reason only, and that's because I saw a clip of Shadows of the Damned that one Suda 51 game that nobody talks about where they, where they talk about like a place called like scary Stershire. And that's like, and it, it had like basically the same spelling as Worcestershire. And then that's, and I was like, Oh, so that's how you pronounce it. Shadows of the damned low key in my top 10 games. I can believe that. I, I feel like the cool thing about Suda51 games is that they always click for somebody. Not necessarily me, not necessarily for for you, whoever might be listening to this, but it but they will click with somebody and it will be their favorite game ever. Like a lot of people talk a good game about Killer Seven, and I realized very quickly that this was not a game that I enjoyed. I still finished Kill, Kill, Killer Seven, but I was like I did not enjoy this nearly as much as some of the people who, like, really, really enjoy it. But I know that those people are out there, and they really, really love that game, and it really spoke to them in some way. In a lot of ways, Killer7 really spoke to me, too. Like, I, you know, now I think a lot about the phrase kill the past sometimes. Like, I, like I recognize and understand that sentiment in a way that I wouldn't have if I hadn't played the game. I know there's like 50 other games in the Kill the Past series, but I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm going to keep it real with you. Th those, half of those are like visual novels, and I have a really poor track record at finishing those. Yeah. I'm hoping that at some point I play the PC port of No More Heroes, because that was like, that was like my, the, the Pseudo 51 game I was most interested in playing. But I don't know, I, I hear that they're kind of a little bit sketch, the, PC ports of, um, of No More Heroes. God, I really love the character designs in No More Heroes, so a lot of the Suda Fifty One character designs are just really good. But I, I, I really like the kind of like kind of punk, kind of gri grimy aesthetic of the No More Heroes characters specifically. All right, this would be the left horn. Okay, now we just need to make the rest of the neck and the kind of body trailing behind it, as well as the claws. Or actually, we might not even need the claws, depending on what happens. We also need to do the whiskers. Let's do the whiskers first. I feel like I'll forget those if I don't do them now. Let's do... Hmm. Can't be red. Maybe kind of like a... Uh... 
big high contrast color. I could eventually just put this all in a gradient map that has a lot of green in there. That might be a good solution. I do feel like I need to bump up the stabilization a lot, though. Get Whiskered Dragon. <laughs> I guess these are more like barbells than whiskers, aren't they? They look a lot like catfish barbels. Yeah. They do look very dignified though. I do like I do like how dignified it makes the dragon look, having like a mustache. I kind of made it a little bit too fat over here. Let me see if I can't fix it with the liquify tool. There we go. Grandpa dragon. <laughs> I mean, most dragons are probably, statistically speaking, grandparents of some form or another. You don't get to be that old and not have some kind of offspring running around somewhere. All right, good stuff. Grandpa Dragon, I guess it's just a Pokemon. Huh? Is that is Grandpa Dragon like a Pokemon? I feel I, I don't think I've heard of that one. I'm not familiar with, with Grandpa Dragon, the Pokemon. The older you get, the more <laughs> oh <laughs> I mean I guess that's true. <laughs> God, now I'm just imagining like a for like a dragon being like, I can't think about getting married. I'm only 400 years old. I'm still a bachelor. There's a grandpa dragon. Grandpa dragon is called Grandpa. Really? Hang on, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get eyes on this guy. Oh my god, that's awesome. Oh my god, he's so cute though. Look at my guy. <laughs> That's so cute. Hang on, let me yeah, let me uh sequester this dude for my own purposes. Abuelito. Oh, that is a big picture. Hang on. There we go. Let me put him up there. And actually, while we're at it, let me put in another picture, too, because I really like this picture from these Virtues Last Rewards stream. I just love the vibe of it. It protects bully children? Oh, my God. Grandpa Dragon. For a minute, I did, th I did think that the dragon that you guys were talking about was just Rayquaza. I remember Rayquaza very, very clearly because one of the first games that I played as a child was Pokemon Emerald. Yeah, I mean, Rayquaza's probably old as balls. He's probably a grandpa, too. I can't imagine Rayquaza being young. <laughs> Man, the funniest shit I've ever seen done with Rayquaza was this one time somebody put the... Sonic, um, real Sonic, Sonic Adventure real time fan dub over like a picture of Quaza, Groudon, and uh, Kyogre being like, "Listen up, you fucking <laughs> hot topic reject, and you blue bubblegum bitch. <laughs> I've had enough of both of you, and I hope you both die." <laughs> I need to finish Pokemon Emerald someday just to see if that's like an accurate dynamic. Was it an edit? I feel like it was like a picture. I remember seeing like a like a mini comic of it. Either way, very iconic. Hold on, I I missed a little spot here.
It was a comic. That sounds right. I feel like I saw. I remember seeing it as a comic. It might have been a dub of the comic as well. There are many doors to life. Okay, so we got that ready. Now the next part will probably be the body. Yeah, okay, sure. Oh yeah, I also need to remember to do the little top part there. Okay, we can do that though. Okay. We can get rid of a bunch of this other stuff for the time being. Yeah, there we go. Just head. Man, I had no idea how much easier this would have got with access to the liquefied tool. Like, I feel like I would have been struggling still with, like, the first little star shape there if this was, like, old pabs. Hmm. Okay, then we're going to add another one back here. Do kind of like a figure eight loop. Could stand to have a little bit more width on that last bit. I almost said girth, but I feel like that would have been a poor decision. Okay, and then a little bit more over here. Actually, I need to remove this top part here. Where? Where? Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. Quick heads up, I we are like five seconds away from running an ad. So plug your ears for around 30 seconds real quick. Or, or I guess don't? I don't know. Is there anybody who actually like, like enjoys the experience of advertisements? Wait, what the? Oh, that can't be right. Hang on. Oh, shit. Huh. Okay. So I might have fucked up a little here. I feel like it, it, it is worth noting that I might have fucked up a little bit here. Hang on. How do I... Hmm. Let me... Oh, there we go. I, I think it's because I used a fill tool. I accidentally uh, took a little bit more than I was hoping to. But it's okay, we got this. We persevere. Okay, then remove this part here. Nope. Let me try that again. Okay, and then it kind of curves inward here. Okay. So from there, we just kind of have to spruce that up right here. All right, so note to self, don't go around playing stupid games with the layering. Or I guess with the fill tool. I don't know. I don't think of it. If that, if, that is, all is, if that is all there is to learn from this experience, it's not a whole lot, is it? Well, that's okay. Okay, so then this next bit here, we're going to need to remove this. Just shear off a tiny bit.
I'm glad I took the time to fix this now, though. I feel like it would have been much more frustrating to fix later on. Okay. And then we have the rest of the tail. Back here. Hmm. Wait, no, hang on. How did I structure this? Wait, no, I've got it. Okay, and then we're going to just add that, remove this part. I guess we can keep it on just real quick. Okay. I'm gonna take a quick sip of water too, hang on. Okay, now I know what I need to do. I put a bunch of these. Okay, let me take out that one at least. Okay, and then with the hard eraser, I'm going to add like the coils back here. No, wait, that's a little too wide, isn't it? I feel like it'll kind of go in like this. Okay, and like that. No. Hmm. Maybe. Hmm. Okay, maybe if I work backwards. Okay, yeah, this is. I think this is. This can work. And then we just remove this little ear here. Wait, shit, do dragons have ears? Oh, wait, no they don't. What am I talking about? Uh, I have such a... <laughs> like, such a tremendous fear of mine is that I'll just randomly forget, like, a random... Like, a very important feature of an animal when I'm drawing them. Like, I remember back when... <laughs> like, this is a consistent problem for me, which is why I'm so scared of it, right? Like I like the one that I remember the most was it, when I was drawing Asbestos from Ark Knights. I was like ninety percent done. I was like ready to call it a night, and then I'm like, wait, did I remember to draw her tail? <laughs> and it turns out I did not, in fact, remember to do that. <laughs> so I ended up having to spend like another half hour on there, just like grafting a tail onto this poor woman. Okay, ho hold on a minute there. Asbestos doesn't have a fat tail. I'm sorry. I Listen, I am so 100% pro fat tail agenda, but like, Asbestos does not have a fat tail. Asbestos does not, not have a fat tail. She is not being the, the, the slim tail allegations. Hang on. Yeah, no, I, I think you're probably thinking of t like, this is a tail, right? Like, it's a nice tail, right? It's a perfectly serviceable tail, but, like, it is not a fat tail. That is just, like, a normal size tail. The one you're probably thinking about is Tomimi, who is, like, president of the Fat Tail Representation Club. Esta. Uh, this is probably the one that you're thinking about. Possibly, possibly. I know, I know she's like the one who started the fat tail meme. Yeah, that, like that's a fa that's a tail right there. <laughs> right? Like that that is like a blue ribbon sized tail. Like th this is like I said, this is a perfectly nice tail that I'm sure she enjoys having. That I why did I say it like that? But, you know, it's not I wouldn't call it a fat tail.
But yeah, that aside, <laughs> I, I, uh, fat tail or not fat tail, she's just lugging around a tire in her jeans. Woof. What? Oh, okay. I, I, see, I understand what you mean. Actually, no, she is using this one to pick up a duffel bag. I can't imagine that's particularly light. God, I still remember how cool I thought that I, 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 Asbestos' shield is. Like, this is supposed to be, I feel like this is a door that she very much like ripped off of somewhere and just attached a bunch of different exploration shit to. Yeah. A toned tail. A, a, a tail with a lot of like, a lot of red muscle. Okay. We can bring this guy back, and then there we go. Okay, I feel like that's a good length for, like, a dragon to be. Now we need to add the kind of, like, additional hair accessories. Asbestos trying to claim to be part of the thick tail team by having it contrasted with skinny legs. <laughs> She's just using, like, forced perspective to make it look fat. God. Stolen Valor. You hate to see it, truly. In Arknight's world, is there like a... You know how like TikTok supposedly has like those... Like, um... Those beautifying effects that you can't make it turn off? Does, it, does the Arknight's world have one for or those that just makes your tail look fatter? Do you think? Like, in the equivalent of Arknight's TikTok, and I feel like there must be an Arknight's TikTok. <laughs> I will be fucking surprised if Arknight's has not had a parody TikTok in there just yet. I know they've had, a, like, a parody Facebook. I remember that that was, like, a... Like, part of the Drosoles event or something. I don't remember... The, the kind of, like, beach... The beach party event. Can't recall how much animal features usually matter. I do remember that uh, Tomimi was like, that um, our queen here, Tomimi, was actually very conscious of her fat tail. So I feel like maybe it's, it's not like a, seen as a positive thing, unfortunately. There is a streamer operator. There is. Her name is Click. Hang on. Let me, let me get this girl in here. Yeah, this one. I actually like her design a lot, too. I don't know. There's just there's something about her her vacant stare that's just really funny to me. Thick tail versus thin tail. Hmm. It's a U or something. Oh, is there? Hang on. U arc nodes. Hang on. Streamer. Character. U official. Hang on. Oh, okay, so it's, I haven't seen this one before, actually. Hang on. Why does she not have a... Oh, here we go. Does she not, like, have a character sprite? Hang on. Oh, here we go. I have not... I have never seen this person before in my life. I do like <laughs> the, the goose with the twisted neck here. Gamer, the, the oh, oh for, <laughs> hamster, yo, oh wait, is she supposed to be hamster themed? That's adorable. She's an April Fool's character. <laughs> yeah, like that. That's just like a normal streamer. <laughs> she reminds me a lot of that one that looked like uh like identical to Coronet. Hang on. What fucks me up about like the the one that looks exactly Golden Glow? That's her name. What fucks me up about Golden Glow is that she looks exactly like Corny, but she's supposed to be a Scottish Fold cat. Like, that fucks me up so hard. Like, what, what do you mean? Hang on. This is take, game press is taking forever to load. Here we go. 
Let let me let me grab. Let me grab the PNG. Hang on. Why can't I? Is the page just not loading? Hang on. Oh, there we go. There she is. Like that's just corny with with self esteem issues, but like she's pink and also she's a cat and it fucks me up. <laughs> like that's Kodosan. <laughs> like where? <laughs> like girl, why did you dye your hair? <laughs> yeah, no, she's supposed to be like a Scottish fold cat. You you can see it a lot more in, in the tail, I think. What is she holding, by the way? I haven't. I I never lo looked at her like proper character sprite before. What is that thing? <laughs> well, whatever. No, I get that it's a stave, but like, what? Is that a fucking Duracell in there? <laughs> oh my god! Arc Knight's character designs continue to clear. <laughs> If you were recruited, what would your gameplay archetype be? I'd probably be just... Hmm. It's been a long time since I've played Arknight, so I don't know what kind of archetype I would be. Get fried! Powering my fucking ancient wizard stuff with a so battery. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I know a lot of wizards have been trying to be environmentally conscious and and switching to a... Ba uh, battery like a rechargeable battery stuff but i feel like the lithium in those is just very problematic to get rid of once your staff is at its end of as it's at its end of life you know you have to go to the staff recycling center and shit you have to like get a whole bunch of papers in order it's so much they have fist boys huh i probably be something like, like the thing is right I would want to be a fist boy, but that's that is like my main dilemma is that I would like in all opportunities where I can be a fist boy, I would love to be a fist boy. But I don't know if I can run with the fist boy boys that are present in Arc Knights. Like I've seen the like <laughs> engine skill. <laughs> that would be something, huh? Alright, the next part of the beard we need to make. We should make the hair a different color. Because I feel like if we make it the same color as the beard, when it crosses under through here over around abouts, it'll be a little bit more confusing than it needs to be. I don't know. I would probably be whatever Arknight's equivalent is of a joke character. So maybe like one of those pushing units. I just like mollywop a guy with my back with my rice bag, and he would just get launched to the other side of the map. Push units are so fucking funny to me. Looking up at the tallest operator, a giant buff tiger man that was top of his prison. Uh, hi, I I'm new here. <laughs> God. I like that 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 giant the the giant buff tiger man in question's name is literally just Mountain. Like, yeah, bro, <laughs> you are that big. Hang on, let me let me let me pull up some optics on this guy. The giant tiger man in question. <laughs> like, just look at him. <laughs> You look at this motherfucker and you tell and I tell you that his name is Mountain and you're like, yeah, that tracks. How tall is this guy actually? Hang on. How how actually tall is this guy? Like in centimeters. A hundred and ninety-five fucking centimeters. Joseph Joestar as cat. I would be okay, so like, hang on. All right, so if we say that this is 195 centimeters, right? So the way I want to calculate this is as follows, right? I'm going to calculate real quick what's 140 over 195. 
you know, divided. 140 divided by 195. So that's like 70%, all right? So I, I, if I shrink this down by 70% on the height, it's a little bit over 70%. It's like 71.7%. I would be like this next to him, single grain of rice. Oh my god, I wouldn't even reach his chest. <laughs> I don't know. I've been thinking lately that I'm actually too tall for how I draw myself. Like, don't get me wrong. I would. I have no issues being, like, fun size, but I feel like given, like, the proportions that I normally give myself, it's... Hang on. Where? Oh, here we go. I am the wild man. <laughs> Fuck. That was just like me from the future, just just coming in to fulfill a timeline loop. No, wait. Actually, that is pretty small. Hang on. If we're if we're looking at the perspective, right? I did also find out at some point that I'm shorter shorter than Dora the Explorer, which is funny. Hang on. Let me turn down the stabilization so I can draw faster. Drawing with low stabilization after a period of drawing with a lot of stabilization is genuinely like a rockly takes the weights off kind of moment. Hang on, those legs are too long. <laughs> Wait, what? Let me try that again. We should we can throw this into a party game. Is it taller than Pabs? <laughs> You know, everybody's played Will It Kill, but have you played Is It Taller Than Pabs? Yeah, no. I definitely have him beat on, like, the width, but I am... See, like, the problem is that, like, I would be, like, so big, right? I would be, like, super bulky if I'm 140 centimeters. Like, if, if I went down to, say, hang on. What's 100 over, like, what's, like, one meter over 190? Almost, like, 50%, right? Hang on, which one of these is the 140? Oh, here we go. Hold up. All right, let me grab this, transform it into like 100. Which is like 50% on height. Man, remember when we were making an illustration? <laughs> me neither. <laughs> You may be the mountain, but I'm the province. <laughs> Why does that actually go so hard, actually? No, hold on. You cooked. <laughs> All right. So this is 100 centimeters. Right? And if I copy and paste this paths on the left here, on the right here, And then I make him 100 centimeters, right? That somehow feels like it's much more correctly proportioned. Well, 
right? Like, like I feel like this is, this is much more proportional compared to like, like if you compare my head to the size of my head to his, it's only slightly bigger. Runt mode. <sighs> yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> Let me actually save this for reference. I might need to like update my official stats later. I might officially have to like announce the fact that I'm becoming even smaller. <laughs> officially. Alright. Hi Golden Glow. Hi this person. I don't I don't know her. Bro is shrinking? Yeah. Man, you should have read the fucking tags on the back of my sweater. If I shrink if you put me in, in, in anything less than cold water. <laughs> I did get it in my brain that maybe you could be a Sans-ish character in a fighting game or incor to incorporate the different forms. I could see that. <laughs> my, I have an install super that just literally gives me back, that just turns me into human mode, and it does nothing but just make, make it so that it almost no longer whiff against me. <laughs> Like I can low profile most normals, but not, but uh, it, with my install mode, it just actually hits. So it's just a net negative. <laughs> I did make a joke about like dragon install for the for the calendar sketch this week. And <laughs> the fun funniest fucking shit is that this is like supposed to, like the Dragon and Soul is supposed to be like the kind of iconic soul move, I feel, right? Like it's the one thing that Soul is like is like, you know, when Soul unleashes his inner demons, he go he goes dragon mode. Like that's his thing, right? But the problem is that on every single version of it that I looked up in Dust Loop, it all said some variation of yeah, no, this install super sucks shit and you should never use it unless you're trying to, like, clown on your opponent. To balance out people getting really mad about your height and giving them the Johnny Punch while standing, you're only short sometimes. <laughs> Alright, let me actually change up the color on this thing. What about... No. Ooh. Ooh, I like that kind of, like... Arizona Ice Tea Hatsune Miku Baja Blast Blue Green Teal. I guess the color is teal. Alright, let's finish this guy up. Okay. Add this here. Okay, then put this over here. There was just like this tiny little speck here on the beard that bu bugged the hell out of me. Let me drink some more water. Oh, thank you for the posture check. I am unshrimping as we speak. I was actually thinking a lot about, like, kind of how my fighting game archetype would work, because I feel like in order to make me any kind of fare to use, I would have to avoid being able to low profile everything. Like, I, I, it could be my gimmick that I just low profile everything and do pitiful damage, but even then, that feels like it could be kind of busted. So I thought about, uh, so I thought about like what what like really short characters have in order to balance that out, and I I actually watched um some of per some of Pearl's um. Grand Blue Fantasy streams, and Pearl mains Charlotte a lot of the time. And I realized, oh, the tiny crown on her head, the, the very tall crown on her head, actually, is part of her hitbox. And that's how it's, like, evened out. Like, with the crown, she's, like, the height of a normal person. And 
I thought maybe I could do something like that where I just like have rice be writing on my head for some reason. <laughs> Let's see. Oops, wrong layer. Going to assume her brain is in there. There's literally a comic that has that exact same punchline, I think. I think it's made by the... Um, I think... I, I think... Uh, I forgot their name. Uh, MCZ Keo or something is their, is their handle on Twitter, I think. But yeah, I think I think I remember seeing a joke with that exact same thing. Yeah, that that person makes really good art, honestly. I I'm really I really like their um how do you describe it when like somebody does something you like but you can't pin it on exactly like one thing? Right? Like like they 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 just like have a, such a strong solid style that I really enjoy. Okay. Got that part done, and then... I did also realize just now that we've had the Funko Pop eyes just here for the entire thing. So those are for sure going to be in <laughs> the time lapse, just kind of observing reality. <laughs> Get comfortable with them. <laughs> now, if ever we needed an effective watermark, this is it. <laughs> Okay, let's shrink that down. Okay. Wait, which part is this? Okay, so we're just all gonna kind of have to wing it from here. Just kind of sweep this into the arch. Just kind of put this, there we go. Let's make it reach the end there. And then just add the rest of it right here. Hmm. Okay, and then just this bit right here and with that we should be good to go and we can just start color adding the color gradient let's turn on all the layers so we can see this guy in his full glory okay and add the pearl and all those other things It's not looking too shabby. Although I do kind of want to add, want to move rather. What's this thing? Dragon time. Hey, buddy. And let me, let me erase this layer real quick. I want to move this guy. 
Mm, nope, a little bit further up. Yeah, there we go. Honestly, this looks pretty tight. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, 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 I am going to obviously change the colors up, but I think, in terms of like the composition, we are good to go. All right. How do I want to play this? We have also f finally banished the fucking Fun Funko Pop eyes now. <laughs> They no, we will suffer their torment no longer. Okay, copy and paste this. Merge the visible layers. This is good. It's kind of busy enough that you don't really focus on any one thing. What? Hang on. Oh no! Did I include the gray background in there? No, no way! I did. No, wait, I think I might have. Oh, I did merge all visible layers. That's why. Hmm, okay. Okay. I was going to do something. Right, the gr gradient mapping. Okay, well, let's see if we have an, any nice kind of like green ones. Ooh, this was kind of interesting. And yeah, we're switching up the gray so to do something else. And let's mess around with this one a little bit. Okay. We just move these up. Hang on. Huh. All right. So quick change in strategies. We need to. We actually need to do a couple of things. We need to go back real quick and make sure that none of the parts here overlap. So I think what we're going to do is just very quickly erase this kind of compiled layer. Ah, fuck. Uncle Popeyes. Anyway, we're going to go real quick just to the head here, especially just like the little gaps here in the head. I really like those. Invert the selection and then across multiple layers. Where? Yeah, there's one that's like multiple layers. Here we go. Just in a couple places, like here, 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 and here as well. This one too. The the erase across multiple layers tool is really really strong, so I don't like to whip it out too often, but it is very useful when it's available. I do also think it would be a wise idea to maybe tone shift a couple of these guys down. So for example, these guys. Hang on. Let me stuff in the folders first so we have a backup copy. Increase the saturation, decrease the luminosity. Or actually, maybe we could just cheat this a little bit. What about if we change the hue a little bit and bumped up the saturation, but only barely touched the, lum the luminosity? I feel like we can do something with that. Okay, shift that even further back. We don't want too much of a difference, right? Because then we kind of lose the plot a little bit. Although I am realizing now that we have lost the plot kind of to begin with by putting this one all the way over here. Hang on. Let me get the liquify tool out here. Okay, perfect. Let me delete this set of layers. Merge these ones. 
And then bump the hue down a couple notches, bump the saturation again, lower the luminosity. Okay. Now we should be ready to apply some more stuff. While we're at it, let me boost the contrast a little bit. This is mainly to serve the gradient mapping later on. Hmm. All right, let's start with this one. That is such a strong red. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, edit, trans internal correction, gradient map. Yeah, see, now it's much more responsive to the gradient mapping. What if we invert this? Ooh, that's kind of cool. Let me, um, hang on. Hmm. I kind of like this one. I'm a big fan of this one. Not too sure about the fact that it's like, hang on, what if I... Not too sure about the fact that it's kind of crossing over on the part here. I can do something about that, though. I can do something about that. Okay, we'll keep this as a strong contender. I really like this one so far. Hmm. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Hang on. It's just something that's bugging me about this. There we go. That should make it a little bit more crisp. Okay. We'll leave this one alone for now and try our hand. Oh, God. It's just so strong. <laughs> when you compare it to the original one. <laughs> okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to copy and paste it again. We are going to check out some more of the gradient maps that we can do. And we might even mix and match some of these, too. I feel like in order to help the grayscale a little bit more, we could try to do a different color for the parts here. Because you can see here... Okay. Actually, having this in grayscale really points out where I can help a little bit with some of these. Let me try something real quick. Let me shrink this down. Ah, fuck the Funko Pop. <sighs> shake it off, shake it off. Okay, so right off the bat, we need a different color for, or at least a different intensity for the part, for this part here. I have an idea for how to do that. Okay, so if we look at the color wheel here, right, between these two, not too different. What we'll want to do is we're going to want to switch these to a different, maybe darker tone. Like that. I feel like that could help a little bit. Mm, but, hmm. Huh. Every time you get Funko jump scared, it's so funny. I never see it coming. Even though I have these two large pod peepers on me, I can't. I never see it coming. Coming now. <laughs> Tell you what, fuck it, we ball. Let's just go with it for now. As for the barbells, the barbells will be the next most important thing. 
We need to lighten those up a little. We can make them the same tone as the eyes. Actually, we can make the one on the right slightly darker. So that way we have a little bit of a difference with those. Ditto the horn. Where's the other horn? Right horn. Here we go. Right horn of the Forbidden One. Wait, what? Hang on, why is the... Where's the horn? Hold up. Select layer. Which one? Oh, it's right there, huh? Okay. I should have removed this one then. Okay. Now we just need to lower the luminosity on this one. And I think with that, we should be good to go. Let me try and pack this thing up again. Hit it with this. Let's try with the, the first time we, that we got. Uh, I think it was in this folder here. Oh, yeah, that is much better. Now the problem is, though, that it's melting with the scales on the back. Okay. Not to mention... Okay. Okay. We went a little bit too ham with the darkening on the left, on the right barbell. The right horn is fine. The left barbell is not. Uh, the, the left barbell is fine. We need to go lighter with this one. Okay, I think I got an idea for what, for what to do as well. Okay. Let's see. So this color is currently this much darker than the other one. So we wanted like a li little bit of a halfway point over here. Okay, and then we want for this part here, we want a brighter one. I have an idea. Let's grab this. Put it here. Mm, maybe that's a bit much. I feel like that should be good. We're going to end up making the pearl and some of the shiny parts white again anyway, so that's fine. At least that's a plan. Maybe if I bump up the contrast again, that'll help a little bit too. All right. Pray for me. Where's the... Here we go. Oh, look at that. Oh, that is much better. Especially once I add the white parts to the pearl and the halo. Hang on. Put this part here. Use the rough eraser because we're not trying to be gentle here. We can just select the head and the beard. There we go. I like this. I'm a big fan of it. Now all we got to do is that one last little trick that we did last time. Hang on, what? There we go. Some weird kind of like um, artifaction on some of these. So I'm going to... 
take a quick few moments to fix it. We're basically done. Just need to add something on the ba in the background background. It's also good to go in and do a few little finishing touches here and there. Okay. I think that should be the last of it. Oh, it couldn't hurt to make sure. Okay, and that... Are we cool? I think we're cool. We're almost cool, hang on. Okay, yeah, okay, we're cool. All right. Now, I just wanted to add one last thing, which was a background pattern. So for that, I remember seeing a, I think it was this one, but it might be another one. There's a really nice color pattern here. I wonder if I can find it again. Maybe in one of these ones. Not that one, not that one, not that one. I think I saw it earlier, but I don't want to commit just yet. Hmm. And it's among the ones that I downloaded. If that's the case, though, we might be here a while. Hmm. Pattern. Not that one. Is this the one? Oh, I think this might be the one. Hang on. And we'll put this back here. It might be this one. Let me just keep looking real quick. Hmm. Oh, I think it might be this one, actually. Let's see. Eh, I kind of like how... I don't like how this one... Wait a minute. This is the exact same pattern. It's just that this one is on a gradient and the other one isn't. Thought you could fool me. Yeah, okay, let's just go with this one then. Hmm. Scale. Here we go. Oh, hang on. I might be looking for free transform. No, I'm not. Distort, maybe? Nope. Hmm. May I do want free transform? Hang on. I just want it to, it to be a little less wide. Actually, no, it was it was good, good width earlier. Oh, let me let me take a soup there. Thank you for the hard trade. Okay. Now the next question is how do we deploy this? So obviously first we want to rasterize this layer. Right? That way we can just kind of duplicate it and merge that so we have a nice strong pattern up here. I don't know if I want to do, let me real quick actually do a gradient erase on the bottom there because I don't like how it just kind of suddenly cuts out there. So if we erase it with a gradient, it should have a little bit of the same effect. Just a little bit more gentle too.
Okay. Then maybe what we want to do is we want to provide a nice strong contrast. So because green is kind of like on this side, maybe we'll want to do kind of like a yellow as a kind of a tertiary color. I don't know. Let me try that. What comes after wood on the Chinese zodiac elements? Hang on. Chinese zodiac. The Wikipedia page on this has like a bunch of the ones for the calendar years. Okay, so February. Okay, so we're a little bit early, right? The new Lunar New Year is on February 10th, 2024, according to Wikipedia. Oh, wait, hold up. Oh, okay, so it goes Yang Wood, Yin Wood, Yang Fire, Yin Fire. Okay, interesting. Huh, next year's the Year of the Snake. That's cool. After that, it's the Year of the Horse. Of course, that's 2026, which isn't... I don't know, I don't like thinking about more than one year ahead. It starts freaking me out a little. We need something that'll contrast the green here. More... Ooh, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's kind of like limeish green. Might be exactly what we need. And we can pair this with a darker green here. Mm, but then it doesn't provide enough contrast. Ah, mm. eh, fuck it, we gradient map. Let me try it on this thing. Oh, that is trippy. I like that. <laughs> ah, screw it. Let's just go through... Wait, hang on. What if we... Okay, that's interesting. Hang on. I'm going to save that one just for me. But yeah, we... that's, a, that's a really interesting color pattern. Hang on. All right, let me keep going through the gradient maps to see if we can cook something up. This one's looking a tiny bit evil, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I am kind of liking this one, hang on. What if we... Just sort of reached over. Uh, that's the important part. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Hang on. I feel like it's this one is missing something, but oop! No, no, no! Put it back! Put it back! Oh no! I wanted that one. <laughs> oh no! All right, we we can find it again probably. This is this is fine. <laughs> this is fine. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're ba we're basically back. Hang on. Okay. Okay. And then maybe we can just sort of what happens if we scale no, no, that's a little too oppressive. 
Mm. Let me try that again. This is really annoying because now I don't know if I, the reason I don't like it is because it's not exactly the same as I left it. Eh, actually, this is pretty good. Hang on. Hmm. All right, we'll go with this one then. Okay. And then for good measure, let me grab the inside parts of this and then Actually, what can I do with that? Because, wait, no, yeah, wait, no, I got, I got, I know what I'm gonna do. Hang on. It's just bugging me how it's kind of interrupting parts of the picture here. Grab this, grab this. Up here should be a, this should have a couple of problem areas too. Yeah, like right here. Okay. Then anything else we should be on to look out for? I think. We just need to, hang on. I use the G pen, this should be a lot easier. There we go. A little, you seem to have a little something up your nostril there, Mr. Dragon. Okay. Then I think the rest of this should be good to go, basically. I just need to put my signature on it and call it a night. Okay. Yeah, no, I think I think we're good here. Let me save this, put the signature on it, and then we'll call it a night. We can just erase this other part of the squares. There we go. All right. Well, I'm going to see who all is streaming, but thank you, everybody who came by. I really appreciate it. It's really cool to be back. I'm glad to be streaming again. And yeah, I, I hope everybody's having a great first few days of 2024. All right. Catch you later. Bye. Oh, we're going to be rating a. Uh, BZ, who is doing live 2D rigging. Or, actually, no, hang on. Oh, wait, Corgi's also making art. Never mind, we're going, we're going to go see Corgi. Go, we're going to go see what Corgi's up to. All right, catch you later. Bye.